We are a few weeks from the row rut. As English summers go, 2014 is currently a corker. And what could be more English than this gorgeous corner of Gloucestershire? Deer stalker Paul Childerley grew up here. These days he runs a stalking operation in Bedfordshire that offers all Britain's deer species. His father is still a Gloucestershire gamekeeper. Paul cut his stalking teeth on this ground, on pests and on roe. And it's roebuck we're after today. Stalked and shot this uh, estate up until I was 21. Um, so I grew up here, did all my stalking and it's like my apprenticeship to the uh, industry on this place. So it's a privilege to come back here and see the family and have the opportunity to go stalking. And we're just here, up here now and we're gonna have a quick shot with a rifle. I've just taken off a, a scope off the top, which I have um, been using for fox shooting. I'm um, just to make sure it's on song. He likes to zero at 100 yards, then he knows that he can comfortably shoot out to 150 yards. This is the first shot, second shot I pulled, and um, I fired again. I thought I pulled it, which I had slightly. So, I mean, you know, in a thumbnail, 100 metres. Um, I am going to click it up, up a click. I do like it just a little bit higher, so you've got the, the distance on the longer shots. It's custom build. Um, Macmillan stock, which is lovely stock, and a uh, built on a Remington action. It's with obviously a Zeiss scope, which is no doubt the best there is. To be fair, this one, the new HT, is actually my favourite scopes. And they're just absolutely brilliant for everything from stalking, night shooting, waiting up, high seating, even boar shooting out. You, you can wind them right way down to three power. Um, I've even, you know, I shoot, even shoot driven ball with them. This is not an evening for a trophy animal. Paul is helping his dad thin out the local row population. Headshot is not advisable for an amateur, basically. But if you're in a park situation or in a, in a high seat, steady situation where you can get a clear shot ahead, you know, you've got minimum damage to the meat, um, clean, clean kill um, or high neck. Not recommended by everybody. Whether there's a, an amateur or not very really good shot, trying to head shoot or neck shoot something, then you do get you know, there's a lot more room for error. To get the job done efficiently, first place to go is the car. With pheasant poults about to land on shoots up and down the country, Paul's mind is not only on row. Squeaking doesn't work on that one. Perhaps it's already educated. Back to the deer. Covers up, up really tall. This time of year is, is, a, is a real hard time of year to obviously shoot road bucks just for the cover. A lot of the bucks are laid down as well, it's like pre-rut. So what I tend to do, um, a lot of the time you're looking for, in these woodlands, looking for a little bit of shade or, or just a little bit of antler sticking at the top of the cover. It's, it's, it's minute, um, getting towards the dust now, so they should come out to the edges of the fields um, or onto these rides. Now, we're not here entirely for the benefit of the local environment. Paul has been sent a new pair of binos. It's great with all the cover cover around, having a obviously decent pair of binoculars, um, especially when you're looking for such minute bits of antler or a, a corner of an, of an ear, just, just sticking over top of the cover. These obviously are the new Victory HTs that are out. They're actually, you know, great. These are 54 rather than the 56, which makes them a lot, a lot lighter. Uh, I've got an old pair of Victory uh, 12 to 56s. Great binocular, great for the Chinese water deer, because um, you can see the me measurement of the tusks. Uh, but they're very heavy. Um, I still use them, but I think from now on I will be using these for just, just for the weight itself. It has been a good year for Roe here, thanks to the warm winter. There may be plenty of them around, but their behaviour is still unpredictable. When you stalk deer a lot, you have your camouflage gear on and your stalking kit on, and uh, <laughs> they'll be really wild to you. You creep through the wood, and they'll just, you know, they'll just bolt, and then you can just be like rambling through the woods with with the dogs and you know your children and stuff and they'll be stood there looking at you and it's quite funny they know what's danger definitely spot a six point buck on top of the hill um he's um he's on the boundary so it'll be a good one to take out We can have a look at him and uh, see what he looks like. Push on up through the uh, standing wheat and uh, get to the ridge, get all set up there and hopefully he's going to walk back into us and uh, 
gonna get a good look at him, see what he's about in him. If he's a one wheel, take the shot. All being well, fingers crossed. Uh, must be a good thousand meters on the other side of the valley. And because uh, you're on the bank, you're looking down onto the grass. You can see it very clearly, but now he's stalked up to the ridge. The grass is up level with the buck, so very difficult in spots. So we've got to stand here to scan the area. It's a long stalk up there and a 20 minute wait when we arrive. Giving it up as a bad job, Paul walks on, pointing out where it must have been lying. Then this happens. Whoop. That's stalking. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically we stalked about five miles from that way to the top of the hill here um, for this buck because um, we knew he'd lie in, lie in this grass and uh, just got to uh, a good vantage point and um, we, we spied, waited again for another 15, 20 minutes, nothing. Patience got the better of me again, we got forward and then um, the cameraman stepped on a stick and spooked it. <laughs> the next field produces the kind of buck Paul wants. Stalking round to it reveals another couple of small bucks. This is a target-rich environment, but it still requires all Paul's skill even to get onto one of the little ones. It is also getting darker. We come to a new area um, where they cut, just cut some, some corn, silage, and uh, straight away there was a doe out there and uh, these two young bucks at the bottom corner. Um, we decided to go after them and uh, yeah, it was, it was actually quite quick, furious and uh, all over quite quickly really. We, we jumped out, literally trying to beat the light um, to the bottom corner, got into some tall grass and, and they sort of realised that we were, were there, um, or the one buck had, um, but I knew they, were, they weren't going to go anywhere because we, we cut them off from the wood. One slightly better, so I'm going to try and shoot the uh, smaller buck, the only little spiker thing, um, perfect for, for a coal buck. So I'll give him, if he comes good, we'll, we'll take him out. I waited for him to come out into the field and uh, he's about 150, 150 metres or so. And so I just take a nice, nice neck shot. Yeah, a nice simple shot really off the bipod. So, uh, you know, it, and that was, that was him over. So it was a, it was a good result for a, a, a quite a hard start of the day really. But, uh, but no, very pleased, very pleased. <laughs> one of the smallest bucks of the year, but a good one to cull. It is a satisfactory end to an evening stalking. If you would like to find out more about those HT binos, click on the link on the screen or have a look for it in the description below. If you want to go stalking with Paul, visit childerlysporting.co.uk.